in the last 35 years of the National Football League that I, that I know the league, Mike Haynes is the best corner. Mike could play deep if he had to, he could play tight bump, he could play off bump, he could, he did everything. I like to say that a great player will have two or three qualities that set him above everything else, but there's usually a quality or two that they're not quite good at. Haynes had no flaws. You couldn't find him. Ask him to be physical, he'd do it. Ask him to blitz, he could do it. You wasted him if you did that because he could cover anybody. And he would just mirror you, just mirror your steps. He could shut a guy down all by himself. Those guys you can't find. They're just rare freaks of nature. After seven seasons in New England, Mike Haynes joined the Los Angeles Raiders in November of 1983. He wore the silver and black until 1989 and was twice named an All-Pro. Mike was like the gentleman Raider. He was kind of outside the mold of what the Raiders were supposed to be on and off the field. Mike was a please and thank you guy. He didn't make any noise about anything, he just played. But when he steps out into the field and he shuts everything down, we didn't care, we didn't care if you sell pink flowers, knock yourself out. really a tough position. You have to like a good challenge, and you have to understand that even though they beat you on this one play, that that was just this one play. You need to be able to step back in the huddle and come back again with the same enthusiasm and passion and belief in yourself. That 83 Raider team, I'll put that defense against anybody, anybody. And the whole key was Mike Haynes. Oakland's 1983 season culminated in Super Bowl 18. In that game, Haynes was instrumental in shutting down a Redskins team that at that time was the highest scoring team in NFL history. This guy wasted no motion, nothing. Probably the most efficient player mechanically that I've ever watched. To me, he's the standard by which all corners are measured. Michaela Vernava for Nesson.com here on Radio Row, and I'm joined now by Pro Football Hall of Famer and Patriots Hall of Famer, Mike Haynes. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Now, we're here at Super Bowl week. Huge game, obviously. As a defensive back, an interception in any game is a pretty good thing, yeah. but especially when you have one in a Super Bowl like Malcolm Butler did. We saw his excitement with the game-winning interception in the Patriots Super Bowl win. You also got to experience that in a Super Bowl. What does that feel like? God, I mean, it feels great. Um, nothing like Malcolm Butler's, though. I mean, that was a game-changer uh, and really made the difference in the game completely. Mine... We had already, we were already ahead, and uh, everybody was expecting the Redskins to come back, and that interception just meant you're not coming back, and it changed a lot of things for us. But uh, it's a great feeling, and uh, to know that you had one in the greatest game, in the biggest game all year, uh, it'll be in history forever and ever. So that's what makes it exciting. Well, for Malcolm, it has turned out that it wasn't just a one-hit wonder for him. He's certainly proven himself this season. And the Patriots secondary, a lot of question marks surrounding that squad. Darrell Revis did not come back. How do you think they were able to be as successful as they were this year? Always have to point to great co coaching, you know. Uh, really, I mean, you, you have to know your players. And my guess is to make a decision not to go with Darrell Revis. They knew what they were doing and what they had to do to have a great defense without a guy like Darrell Revis in it. And uh, I think they've always been able to do a great job. You know, Belichick, in my mind, is a, he's a, he's a great defensive coach. And uh, the guy that you want to have uh, calling the plays and, and telling guys what they need to do to get better, if you have a guy like that in your life as a young player, it's going to really benefit you down the road. Well, now you played for the Raiders when they were in Los Angeles. So I'm curious what your thoughts are on the Rams relocating to L.A. Well, I grew up in Los Angeles. I don't know if everybody knows that, but uh, that's home for me. And so I grew up with pro football in my backyard. 
All I had to do was wear my Cub Scout uniform and I get to get in the game for free. I mean, I think a community as big as Los Angeles needs, uh, needs pro football, especially if the guys get out in the community. Uh, there's a lot of challenges for young people out there. And when you have, you know, a, a commitment to the community and you're sending your players out and telling them, hey, stay in school, hey, make better decisions, hey, get good sleep at night and, you know, be a good kid, it makes a huge difference. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to see football back in Los Angeles and I'm glad to see it's going to be a stadium that is state, you know, state of the art. Um, Los Angeles, when the Raiders were there, it was famous, um, Raider fans were famous for coming late and leaving early because there were so many things to do in Southern California. But I think that with this stadium, they'll come up with a lot of different events, much like the Patriots do, um, before the game for fans to do things and uh, even for fans to stay late. Well, do you think that it, that will be the case, that fans will come late and leave early, or will it be an instant hit possibly, or will it take some time for the team to gain traction and gain fandom? I don't think so, because, uh, because I'm a baby boomer, and so, you know, my, I'm a former Ram fan, and so my kids are not Ram fans because the, the Rams weren't there. And so you would imagine that a lot of the baby boomers are still there, so they'll be able to talk to their kids and their grandkids take them to the games, and start to build a, a fan base really quickly. Well, Mike, you are a prostate cancer survivor, and I know that now you are able to help other people. What are you doing with that? Well, probably the most important thing we're doing is just letting people know that prostate cancer runs in families. And if you catch this disease early, there's almost a 100% chance you're going to be fine. 99.999% .99 chance you're going to be fine. Uh, but a lot of people don't know what the symptoms are. Uh, and, and the symptoms are similar to a lot of other diseases. So the most important thing you can do is find out if it runs in your family and then talk to your doctor about what to do, when you should start screening, um, because it's so treatable. And it's, it's like crazy to find out in the later stages that you had this disease when you could have done something about it. Now, what organization do you work with for that and what resources do people have out there? Well, well, our whole campaign is really a partnership between the NFL and the Urology Care Foundation, which is made up of like 18,000 urologists uh, in the country. Uh, and our program is called Know Your Stats. So if they want to, any of your um, audience wants to learn more about what we're doing, they can go to knowyourstats.org. Uh, if you have any commonly asked questions, um, good chance you can get it answered right there.